What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to add our hashed passwords to our app with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add the hash passwords that we created in the last video into our app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, it's just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in the last video, we set up Verkzoig, still probably not pronouncing that right, to hash our passwords so that we're not saving plain text passwords in the database. But we didn't actually implement it onto the website. So you can see our users here. There's no field for password. If we enter in a password, there's no database column. We haven't pushed the migration yet. We haven't done anything. In short, we haven't implemented everything we made in the last video. And it's not as easy as you might think. There's a couple of little tweaks we have to make behind the scenes to actually connect our form stuff and our database stuff to the Verkzoig stuff that we did in the last video. So that's what we're going to do in this video. It shouldn't take very long and it's not that difficult. It's just a couple of little moving parts. So I'm in my add users screen. I've, I've deleted all the people that we had previously entered. So go ahead and do that. If there's any users listed here on this page, delete them. We want to start with sort of a fresh slate. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Flask Friday videos. Flask Friday. Uh, so check those out if you haven't so far. So, all right, in the last video, we set up this password hash database column, but we didn't actually push it into the database yet. And we set up all the stuff to, you know, sort of turn our password into a hash, you know, long hash password but we didn't actually implement that into the website. So that's what we need to do now. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal, and I'm gonna break out, control C to break out of here. So we need to make a migration and push that migration so that password field is actually in the database. So let's go flask DB, and then we want to migrate dash M. And let's give this a little message. Let's say uh, added password field, whatever. Alrighty, that looks good. And then let's flask db upgrade. Okay, that looks good. So let's flask run to run our server again. And let's head over here and hit reload. And okay, everything looks good. So now we need to actually add some fields onto this screen so that we can type in a password when we register as a new user. So let's head over to our templates directory and find that add user page. There it is. And if we sort of scroll down here, this is, let's see, here's the form. And I don't know, let's say down at the bottom, let's just copy a couple of these. So here's the favorite color thing from the last video. So let's just sort of copy this. And I'm gonna paste this twice and you'll see why in just a minute. So instead of form.favorite color, this is form.password underscore hash. And same thing here, form. password underscore hash. And okay, so this will be form dot password underscore hash two form label, and here it will be password underscore hash two. Now we only have one password hash thing at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. But if we come back over here and see, we name this password hash. We actually want two of them because anytime you ever like enter a password, you always have two fields one to enter the password and the second one to confirm it, you know, so that they match because you want to make sure they match so that you so that you make sure you sort of type the, the right password or whatever. So we want to do that. So okay, let's come down here to our form. Here's our user form and let's add that password underscore hash. And I probably would have called this just password because we know it's going to be a hash. But uh, whatever, we called it password hash in the last video. So we'll just run with it. So in the past, we've used string fields for all of our form stuff. Now we want to use a password field. And we actually have to let me just kind of copy this. We actually have to import this. So let's come back up to the top here. And let's find our string field. There it is from WTF forms string field. We also want to import password field. And while we're at it, we're probably going to need eventually boolean field. And let's also import validation error. We might get into this in this video, but 
This is obviously when we validate this form. If there's an error, we want to throw a validation error. So we'll use that. I don't know if we'll get into that. Oh, we might get into that in this video. We'll see. So, okay, we've imported that. So let's come back down here again. And here we are. And actually, let's also come up here into our WTF forms.validators right here. We have this data required validator that we've already been using, but we're going to need a couple of more uh, with this here. We need equal to, because we want to make sure password one is equal to password two, the two forms, right? So we'll use equal to to validate that. And we also probably want length. I think that should work. Okay. So that looks good. Now let's come back down here to our form. And in these password fields, let's start out by naming this password. And then we want to call a validator, validate tours. And here we go. And that's just like we've done up here, right? So we want to data required. Boom, boom. And we also want to equal to, we just imported that thing. And we want our password to be equal to password underscore hash two. And let's give a little message here that says passwords must match. All right? Uh, we won't play with this message in this video, but in the next couple of videos, we'll start to implement how to use that message thing. So, okay, that looks good there. For this one, password two, this doesn't actually exist in the database, but we can still use a field put a form field up, right? So here, uh, again, this is going to be a password field. And let's call this one confirm password. It's going to be the label. And again, we want validators to equal. And here we just want data required. Boom. Okay, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this head back over to the website, make sure that looks okay. We're not quite done yet. But if we now hit reload, boom, we get a password field and a confirmation password. And you'll notice if we start to type in here, we've got text. If we type in here, we got these little dots, right? That's what a, the password field does. It makes our password into little dots. So, okay, so far so good. Now let's head back over here and we need to deal with the form itself. When we click submit, it's sending that information to the back end. We need to account for that. So. Let's head down here and let's look at our, let's see, add user. And we see, we can kind of look through here and here's where it lists the stuff. So this is the stuff that's gonna be coming from the form, the name, the email, the favorite color, and that's it. So we need to also add the password. So let's go password underscore hash equals form dot password underscore hash dot data. All right. And then probably down here, let's go form dot password underscore hash equals boom, boom. And there we go. Everything looks good there. Okay. Now we might also want to add this to the update stuff, right? Uh, but we haven't messed with that yet. Maybe we'll do that later. So, all right, let's come back down here and look at this again, just to make sure we got everything. We're adding, we're getting and posting. If name is none, blah, blah, blah. Users query filter by email. If there's no email listed, that means that user hasn't been submitted yet. And eventually we're gonna switch this over from an email type of thing to like a username. But for now, this will work. And here we're setting the user to whatever we entered into this form. Okay, then we're adding it committing it, deleting all the stuff, redirecting. All right, so we look good. And you'll notice again, we haven't yet hashed anything. And I want to show you this sort of the difference between hashing and not hashing and, and, and sort of walk you through that. So, but for now, let's just save this and check out the website to make sure that worked. So let's come back over here. Let's hit reload. All right, so name, I'm going to say John Elder. Let's go John at codemy.com. Favorite color, let's say blue. Password here, I'm going to type in password. And then in this one, I'm going to type in password one, two, three. So these do not match. So we click submit, nothing happens. Now we don't have a little message that's popped up yet. We're going to probably want to do that. We'll do that later. But you'll see, at least it hasn't added this user. So all right, let's try it again. I'm just going to type in password. And again, I'm going to well, 
let's get crazy. Let's type in password one, two, three. And this one will be password one, two, three. So now when we submit, a hey, user's added. Now we can come back here and we see John Elder. Whoops. And we see John Elder. There it is, blue. And we don't have password listed. And we're not going to want password listed here. But for right now, I'm going to switch it up so that password is listed just so we can see that the stuff is working correctly. And also, we want to be able to see if we've actually hashed it or not. We haven't yet. We're going to have to do that in just a second. So let's check that out. Head back over here to the add user form and come down here. This is where it sort of enters the stuff out on the screen. And so we have user ID. Let's see, we have the ID, we have the name, email, favorite color. And then here, let's just type in password. And this is going to be that. And this will be our underscore user dot password underscore hash. Okay, so that looks good. So okay, let's go ahead and save this head back over to the website, hit reload. Okay, so now the password is listed as password one, two, three, that has obviously not been hashed. That's no good. We don't want to save non hashed passwords into the database. That was the whole point of setting up the password hashing stuff in the last video. If you haven't seen that check that out in the playlist. So all right, we need to change this. So how do we do that? Actually pretty easy head back over here. And let's come back down to our add user function. Where is that at? Add user. So this gets called when the form gets submitted when somebody registers, right? And we just played around with this, we added the password thing right here. Well, we don't want to really add that we want to hash it first. So how do we do that? So let's come in here. And let's say hash the password. Right? So let's create a variable called hashed underscore PW. And let's set that equal to and now you remember, in the last video, we did some stuff up here, where we could verify the password, or we could check the password or we could generate the password hash. Well, we want to use that thing generate password hash. And so I can copy this. And remember, we come up here, we imported that in the last video, this guy right here, generate password hash, right? So we can use that. So let's do that. Let's come down here back to our add user thing. Where did it go? There we go. Add user. So here we want to set this equal to that. What exactly do we want to turn into a hash? We want to turn in form dot password underscore hash dot data. Right? And we want this to be an SHA 256 hashed thing, right? So where am I getting this? That's the thing we just submitted. That's the password we just submitted. That's the same thing as this thing right here. Right? So we're saying, hey, take that thing that we just submitted in the form and generate a hash out of it and then assign it to this variable. So right here is where we're entering the stuff into the database where we're saving it. So instead of saving that unhashed password, we want to save this new hashed password this hashed underscore PW variable. So come down here and instead of all of this, let's just do that hash underscore PW. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And that should do the trick. Let's head back over to the website, check it out, hit reload. Now this one is not going to be hash because we've already entered it in, but we can add a new person in here. So name um, J elder, whatever. And let's go john two at code me.com because we need a different email address. Uh, let's say silver password, I'm going to do the same password, one, two, three. And again, here, password one, two, three. Now we can submit this. All right, that was added, we can come back, try it again. And boom, now the password is this whole long hashed thing. And that's very cool. Now we can remember in the last video, we hashed the same password twice, and we got a different hash, we could try that again. Let's go uh, JP elder. Uh, let's go john three at code me dot com. Uh, say red this time, I'm gonna do the same password P A S S W O R D one, two, three, password one, two, three, let's submit this guy, come back, try it again. So here's the new one. And you'll notice these are different. This one is SHA 256 dollar sign CM. This one is SHA 256 dollar sign AI. So these are two different hashes, even though we use the same password, password one, two, three every time. And that's really cool. Now, we're going to want to come in here and take this out. So the passwords aren't listed on this page. 
But just for now, just showing you how to do this, that's, you know, we want to see that it's been done correctly and it looks like it's been done correctly. Now, this password, in fact, I'm just going to delete this guy. Any of these passwords, these are, this is what's saved in the database, this whole long hash, right? The actual password itself, password one, two, three, that's not saved in the database, just this hash. In the next couple of videos, I'll show you how to sort of determine if we type in password one, two, three in the future, how to figure out if that's the right password or not based on this hash. And we'll look at that coming up, but uh, yeah, we're moving right along and uh, this is fun stuff. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.